Great. Well, uh, thanks, everyone. Um, I'm uh, glad to be here tonight. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what went on over the last year. If I can get the slideshow running. Um, first of all, uh, I want to talk a little bit, little bit about SoCalTech, uh, SoCalTech.com. How many people here have gone to the site? Real quick. Um, okay, so some of you. So SoCalTech is an online news site which tracks technology news in Southern California. We track everywhere from Santa Barbara to San Diego, and we have all the funding news, uh, what, uh, who's been bought, who bought somebody, uh, big, big, big uh, business deals. Uh, we have a lot of interviews. In addition, we have a calendar of, of events for all of Southern California. So if you ever want to get out and network, just like uh, like you are tonight, uh, it's it's a great resource there. Uh, and there's a very big venture funding database, and that is a database of all the companies who've gotten venture funding and angel funding uh, in, in the area. Uh, it's actually a national database. Uh, we have some other properties that we run uh, across uh, mostly the western, western half of the U.S. And uh, that's where I'm drawing a lot of this information from tonight. So um, the uh, site is free. You can go on there if you just want to know what's going on. Uh, the database is a subscription, subscription service. So um, that's a little bit about SoCalTech. Uh, oh, and a little bit of background on, on how long it's been around and how I got into it. My background actually is an engineering background. Um, I'm actually a double E, and I did a lot of software work. And this site, which is now a, has been running for quite a few years, uh, originally was a hobby of mine. It's not a hobby anymore, but uh, uh, started it kind of by accident. And so I'm a, I'm a techie at heart, and so I'll uh, talk a little bit about that. And um, great, so let's move on here. So uh, Mike asked me to talk a little about uh, funding, and, uh, funding and exits and, and what happened this year. And I thought I'd start out with funding. Uh, that's kind of the bread and butter of what I follow every day. And that is actually a very good indicator in, in what is going on here in the technology, technology industry. And um, it, it's always very interesting to me to think about uh, and look at the information about what's being funded. Um, for many, one of the questions a lot of people ask me is, oh, hey, what's hot? And what's going to be hot? And the interesting thing is it's never what you expect. It's always something different. And so let's look at the numbers. So, um, whoops, let's go back one. So uh, first, this first chart here, um, and it's going to be a little hard to see, but you can get, see the trend, is actually all the deals, the number of deals in Southern California from Santa Barbara to San Diego uh, on a month-by-month -month basis. December is very low because it's only, what, seven days, eight days into December. Um, but it, it's interesting because it's pretty well distributed. There's no one month. Uh, if you look from year to year, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty well distributed. The, the thing that's good to see on this is, you know, as you go from January all the way to November, deals in November are still pretty, uh, pretty active. So that is a good sign in general for the economy when you see people are still doing deals. It'll be interesting to see what happens this December and, and next January. Um, but that's the number of deals. Uh, and this is the amount, uh, the, the amount invested in total in those months. And uh, that's also a very interesting number. Uh, anyone here who follows uh, venture funding here, you want to guess why this month is so much higher than every other month? There's two deals that uh, were made in, in, Los, in the Los Angeles area, which totally blew the numbers. That's almost uh, $2 billion. One was uh, SpaceX. Everyone know who SpaceX is? You know, the, the rocket firm. They got a billion dollars. So that, that, when you look at the numbers and someone says, hey, look, LA got a, a billion dollars of investment, you got to ask, is that one company or is that 50 companies? And in the case of January, it was SpaceX. The other company um, that got actually several rounds uh, is Snapchat. So that's, uh, that's why that month is so much. Um, the interesting thing uh, that you'll see, uh, at least for me, is typically uh, the venture market in a normal year is, is uh, very active, except for in the summer when all the venture capitalists go on vacation, and in the winter when all <laughs> the venture capitalists go on vacation. And you'll see July, August, actually there's a lot of deals. So it's it maybe a little delay from people uh, getting those deals done before going on vacation. But on a typical year, you see a big drop in, in those. So um, let's talk a little bit about the deals. So 
uh, I always like looking at what are the biggest deals. So the biggest deals are, are often indicative of what happened during the year. What was the industries that were, had the most interest? Uh, last year, uh, or actually a couple, two years ago, every company that was on the big key funding round list was a green tech company. That was solar or, or biofuels or whatever. Uh, this year, actually, it's kind of interesting. Um, SpaceX, of course, is kind of in a class by itself. Uh, Snapchat is social media. That, that's, that's interesting. Uh, Lynda.com, uh, people know that Lynda.com is actually, uh, it, actually, it's got people in Santa Barbara, Goleta, also down here in Calabasas and, and whatnot. So kind of internet-y um, content. Uh, Net Health and Net Omics are interesting. Uh, how many people know who Patrick uh, Soon Chong is? Um, he's a, uh, oh, not too many. So, so he is a billionaire. He's one of LA, LA's billionaires. There's probably a, a, a dozen, maybe, or maybe less than a dozen. And he made his money on biotech. And he has started a, 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 an umbrella company called Nantworks. And Nantworks buys companies and funds them. And they're all involving, well, they're all over the map, but the big ones are all in healthcare. And two of his companies, Nant Health, Nantomics got gigantic rounds. So that's always interesting to note. Uh, SGN, how many people have uh, gone to SGN? Wow, really? Interesting. So SGN is a social gaming network, I think is the original name. Uh, they also uh, run a property called MindJolt. Anyone who has kids who plays video games? Yeah, so video games, that, that, uh, that's a video game company. They have video games. They do a lot in that area. Uh, I... Uh, Security software. CrowdStrike is a security software company. So um, $100 million, that's a big round. The reason for that is the founder of that is George Kurtz, who, is, who was the CTO of McAfee. Uh, he started a company in uh, Irvine called Foundstone. So you'll notice that the big rounds tend to go to the serial entrepreneurs. Uh, I think almost every single one of these companies, aside from lynda.com, were, were in, actually maybe Snapchat too, I guess, uh, a lot of them, a lot of the big rounds go to the, uh, go to the serial entrepreneurs. Uh, Chrome River, anyone heard of Chrome River? Uh, this is an interesting one because you would think, hey, you know, all the big funding deals in Southern California people would know about. And nobody knows who Chrome River is. They actually do uh, uh, software as a service for the enterprise um, and uh, accounting and other stuff. And uh, the, the interesting story is what you think is the industry in an area is not necessarily the industry that, that is getting the money. Um, Southern California, when you talk to venture, a lot of venture capitalists, is consider people go, oh, hey, they have e-commerce companies, Hollywood content. And the funny thing is there are more software companies getting funding than, than uh, content companies in general in the area. So um, let's make sure I go here. So what are some of the uh, key funding uh, sectors? I like this sign, by the way. Uh, anyone gone to a Maker Fair? This is from one of them a few years ago. And <laughs> all sorts of fun, random activities. So when Mike starts this thing up, I'm sure you'll see Coke, Mentos, and mouse traps involved somehow. So, um, great. so key funding sectors. I want to play a game here. I like, uh, I like, I like uh, participation by the audience. And, um, so I was starting out, and I have two slides here. One was Uber for X, and the other one was Airbnb for X. And I was going to put all the companies that belonged to those categories. And I started my list, and I was going to put the logos on. I said, I do not have enough time. There's no way. So I'm going to play a game here. I'm going to tell you, uh, um, I'll give you a category, and you tell me what startups in it. Car washes. What's an Uber for car washes? Uh, Clean, yeah. Uh, of the ones in LA, this is just LA, this is not the nation. There's Envy, Squeal, Squeegee, and Cherry. Um, that's four of them. Uh, how about um, delivery? How about the uh, Uber of delivery? Anyone? Po yeah, Postmate. There's, uh, in LA, there's Schlepp and Fetch, Favor, DoorDash. There's a bunch more. Not to mention uh, uh, all the big guys who are in that game, like uh, Google. Uh, beer and wine, anyone? Drizzly. Uh, and all these guys got money also. This is not just random companies. 
These are the people who've gotten funding, angel funding or venture funding. Um, grocery, Instacart, self-storage, clutter, veterinarians, vet on demand, uh, pickup trucks, pickup. Um, so if you want to get, uh, if you have to move something heavy from, from some store or you want to move your stuff from, you can find somebody who has a pickup truck on demand. <laughs> Say, hey, I need a pickup truck. Um, mechanics, your love, uh, your uh, car love, your mechanic. Um, wait, there's another al alcohol delivery company called Saucy. Parking, valet parking, Zurich's Lux Valet curb stand. Um, there are there are more. Uh, I have two pages of these. <laughs> so, um, what, what someone think of something they don't think is uh, a uh, a startup doing on demand or marketplace for anything. Uh, house painting. Oh, I don't have one of those, but uh, pet. <laughs> uh, pet sitting. There's plenty of pet sitting ones. There's uh, dog vacay and rover.com. Um, dog walking, wagon, zingy. Those are these are the LA startups. I, I know some of these are are outside the air, but they're serving LA. Uh, let's see here. Meal delivery. There's an entire giant industry in Silicon Valley. Sprig, Caviar, Gobble, Revolution Foods, Grub Market, Zesty, Delive, and that's just the, the few that I had two seconds to look up. Um, so this has been the year of on-demand marketplaces. Um, if you want to know what got funded, for better or for worse, there's a lot of those. There's, um, I, I actually thought of taking a, um, putting a uh, piece of software on my site, which you can press a button and it'll come up with your own on-demand um, on company, you know? Take all the all the things in the world you can do, and say the Uber four. So that is that is kind of the the story this year in terms of funding. Um, however, believe it or not, everyone a lot of other people got funding too. Um, I didn't pull all the names all that, but uh, in Southern California, the biggest number of uh, deals was actually for biopharma companies. Um, not too many here, but a few here and there. Uh, a lot in San Diego. Software companies are number two in terms of the number of companies. Um, it, 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 again, I, and this is I used to do software, so I'm always, I always find it amusing when people say, hey, you know, Southern California, they're not known for startups, and software is the number two, two uh, industry for, for us in terms of funding. Uh, medical devices are very high. Uh, there's a lot of medical device companies. Mobile companies, people doing mobile apps, uh, mobile applications. Uh, very high. Marketplace, uh, there's actually probably more than that. I uh, probably have to go and our database has, so this all comes from our database and some of them are probably internet services companies next to that. Uh, content and media is pretty high up there, uh, but again, it's actually not the biggest sector in Southern California. It's a big sector, but uh, I would say having followed this, so I'm embarrassed to say, I tell people that I've been doing this for a thousand and one internet years because I started this website in 1998. So that's at least three or four bubbles ago. And uh, content and media, everyone always thinks is uh, Southern California is a big thing, especially LA, and it isn't. It's a small part of it. It's an important part, but um, there's not a lot of startup folks uh, necessarily in that area. And then electronics. So this, this one is actually good for the 101 quarter, uh, all the folks who live here. Uh, as most of you probably know, Southern, uh, the 101 corridor is known for for many years. It, it was actually it had more venture funding than anyone else, and that was in networking, in semiconductors, and electronics. And what happened is in one of those bubbles, I don't remember which one. Uh, all of a sudden, the venture capitalists decided that uh, hardware and electronics and semiconductors are not very fun to invest in. You know, they said, "Hey, I can invest in an internet company, put five million dollars in, and make a killing." or I can put in $100 million into a semiconductor company and maybe they'll get bought out. So uh, the good news is all of a sudden, electronics and hardware is popular again. And uh, those are actually a lot of the deals. Uh, can anyone tell me why? Nope. Uh, Kickstarter. So Kickstarter, if anyone uh, ha hasn't heard of Kickstarter, is a crowdfunding site. It's heavily populated with gadgets, and I call them gadgets, gadgets and devices, things that say, hey, that's a cool iPhone case, or hey, that's a cool camera, or that's a, a drone, this and that. Uh, that actually has kick-started, literally, a lot of funding in the hardware and electronics area. 
Uh, the reason why, uh, even though I would say that 90% of the, what I see on Kickstarter is a little iffy, you know, it looks great on paper, but anyone who's built a product knows it looks great on paper, does not translate it, I can build it in millions. Um, but the, um, the, the thing about it is that Kickstarter can prove to investors that there's a market. And that's one of the big things. If you're ever looking for money, how many people here are looking for money? Or think they might be looking for money? Uh, yeah, so if you're looking for money, the, uh, the key with, uh, the key with, uh, with investors uh, is, is one of the keys is, hey, is there a customer? Is there an actual customer there? And Kickstarter is great because you can say, hey, we have a million dollars worth of orders already. So if you fund us, you know, we can do it. Uh, there's, a, there's a campaign going on right now for a company that does a, a, an automated beer brewing device. How many people have heard of that? They, they have, a, I think, a million and a half dollars now of people said, hey, I want a device like a coffee maker, or I press the button and it beer, uh, brews beer for me. It's called Brewbot. And those guys are getting venture funding. Do you know why? Because they can point to that million and a half dollars on Kickstarter and say, hey, you fund us. Look what, we got all these customers. So that is why there's electronics uh, companies. And that's actually good for us um, because there's quite a bit of uh, uh, expertise in that area. Uh, how many people here know about Tilt Labs? T-Y-L-T -T Labs. So those guys are in Simi Valley. They, they make everything from battery cases to iPhone cases. And so they actually have been incubating companies uh, like that who have been doing electronics or gadgets um, because you know, they know how to build them. That's, a, that's always an interesting thing to see. You know? So uh, that's a little bit about the deals. Um, uh, 101 Corridor, uh, I actually live up in this area, so I follow this um, uh, very closely. We, uh, we always, uh, I think we've, uh, if anyone's heard some, some folks talking about, oh, do we have an industry here or not? Um, interestingly enough, we do have uh, quite a bit of uh, companies, and I'm going to talk about that next. Um, some of the funding, funding we've had uh, recently is uh, Cyvenio, Cyvenio's here, you guys know about them, Cancer Diagnostics. They're here in Westlake Village, and they take, um, they take blood samples, and they can tell you how, much, how many cancer cells are circulating in your blood very quickly. And they're, they've actually done very well. Uh, the, the reason why that's useful is because it's, uh, in, in traditionally with cancer, you have to take a biopsy. It's very invasive. This one, they just take a blood draw, and then they can tell you, hey, is your cancer recurring or not? Uh, uh, Transform is in Goleta. Uh, they do... Um, uh, they do uh, energy energy conversion devices, um, and they have some stuff in Silicon Valley. That's a UCSB uh, startup, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, they've they've done uh, quite well in terms of having startups. Uh, Procore is a software company up in Santa Barbara. They got thirty million dollars this uh, this year. Uh, Freedom Pops farther down the road, um, down I think in Encino, and they do uh, free free broadband, uh, mobile broadband. So anyone who wants a has a phone and you want to uh, you want to uh, not pay 100 or 250 dollars a month or whatever you pay uh, they do it for free and they uh, that's always interesting um, there's a lot more so if anyone's interested I have a list here and uh, we can uh, talk about it. so let's talk about active investors um, we we have all the deals in in Southern California and uh, taking a look at this year. Ranking it, um, these are actually the most active investors. So Upfront Ventures uh, was the most active event, uh, investor. I think they had nine or ten deals locally. Um, uh, those guys actually just uh, closed a new fund. So that's always a good thing. If you're looking for money as an entrepreneur, go to the people who have money. So there's a lot of venture capitalists um, who are out there, but they don't necessarily have funds to invest. So it's important. Uh, to know who's, who's been there. If you, go, if you go and search our website for people who've raised uh, funds, that's good. Uh, first round capital, that's actually, they're not actually here. Um, one interesting thing about the environment in Southern California is the investors here are not necessarily the investors who are, who are who, people who are investing here are not necessarily the funds that actually have offices here. Uh, first round capital is one of them. They, are, um, uh, they do, like they say, mostly first round and seed deals. Uh, they were very active. And partially, it's because they're seed round investors. Um, uh, Gray, Graycroft. Graycroft is actually based, I believe they're based in New York, but they do have an office here in Southern California. Uh, they just closed a big fund. 
uh, they're very active, and, and that's the, the investments they made are from the prior funds. So they're going to probably be one of the more active investors coming up in the next few years. Uh, Kleiner Perkins, uh, which is the big guy. So Kleiner Perkins is probably the, the name, uh, maybe Sequoia too, but uh, Kleiner Perkins is the biggest, one of the biggest investors. They have, uh, if you look at the IPO, IPO listings, they are probably behind, I would say, the majority of the IPOs, if not, not all of them, but uh, quite, quite a big chunk of them. And they've been very active. Uh, that is a good sign for Southern California, for LA in particular, um, because when you have the, the tier one investor in your market, that means people take you seriously. Uh, Crosscut's another local fund. Uh, they are, uh, uh, they're, they've got an interesting mix. They tend to do more media deals. Uh, Carlin Ventures is uh, more of a seed investor. Um, Wavemakers also are more of a seed investor. So the seed investors are more active. Uh, both Carlin and Wavemaker can can lead deals, uh, but they tend to do smaller stuff. So, um, and then Dehair Capital, does anyone know where they are? It's uh, fascinating to me that they're number eight on our list for the most active investors. It's a family office, which is an angel investor out of Beirut. So, um, uh, when you think about investors as an entrepreneur, uh, you know you you want the uh, You'd be surprised, and, and if you look at their list of investments, it's all the name, uh, flagship, uh, name brand uh, uh, companies that uh, that you might might think of uh, in LA. So um, our our site is great for that. If you're ever interested, uh, we don't have a lot of entrepreneurs using our site for that because entrepreneurs don't have money, so they don't want to sign up for anything. But anyway, if you ever do sign in, you can look in, ask ask your service provider friends to look it up for you. But there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of that information in there. So um, let's talk about exits. So um, funding is great, but exits are better. Um, uh, it's always fun for me, and I like the sign. I, f I think I found it on Flickr someplace, because they found going to the street and exit in the same place, which, <laughs> which is what everyone wants to do, right? They want to take, uh, and, uh, take their, their company through an IPO. And so let's look at the exits. So uh, first, what is the big star here? Ever, no one's seen this, so nobody. Uh, uh, there's a lot of technology guys. Linda. Uh, actually, more than Linda. So, 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 if you look at the exits in Southern California, the ones that are in, and I didn't even include the stuff in Malibu and down here. Just the stuff in Santa Barbara is a stunning number of exits. Nobody, nobody really realizes this. Um, people say, hey, how many IPOs, exits are there uh, here in, in Southern California, especially the Central Coast, you know, from here on up? There's a ton. There, this year was a banner year. Um, obviously, uh, lynda.com was bought by LinkedIn for $1.5 billion. Uh, That's the biggest exit. Uh, MindBody, which is, uh, uh, is, does, does appointments. How many people know about MindBody? Yeah, so MindBody does software which is used for booking, spa appointments, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, they are in uh, San Luis Obispo, of all places. So how many people said, hey, there's going to be an IPO in San Luis Obispo this year? <laughs> Nobody. People, so, so there's a lot, I don't know, if, if anyone sat around, and especially talking about the one on corridor, and they say, how can you build a big company and go to an IPO in, 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 in you know, Westlake Village, right? Come on. Um, they went and they built a company in San Luis Obispo, which I would argue is, is far tougher than building a business in Thousand Oaks, right? Um, they, they did an IPO on the NASDAQ as MB, $448 million is a, the valuation at IPO, I believe. Um, um, so that's, that's a great story. That's a great story for entrepreneurs. So even though you uh, as, a, as someone who wants to be an entrepreneur, uh, even if someone says, hey, you got to be in Silicon Valley and blah, 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 um, these guys did that, did that in San Luis Obispo. So uh, Appfolios in Santa Barbara, $520, uh, $420 million, uh, also IPO on the NASDAQ. Um, Appfolio uh, is in the software area, software company. Um, uh, I, I had to include Cytomics in here. Even though they are not technically headquartered in, in Southern California, 
that company is uh, is actually a backed. Actually, some people in this room may have invested in that company as angels, not me. But <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, uh, that, that's a UCSB company. So you, UCS, the the scientific founders came out of uh, USB for Cytomics. Uh, they have a lot of people related to UCSB. Uh, I think they still have some folks in Santa Barbara. Anyway, they had an IPO. Um, this one's interesting because I never heard of the company until they got um, acquired. An IT, uh, IT software got a company called Ansible. Ansible Works is what they go by. Uh, they were acquired, uh, I think, a couple months ago, $100 million by Red Hat. Um, open, I think they do some open source IT administration uh, software. So it was an impressive year for for the uh, for the uh, Central Coast, and that doesn't include uh, some other stuff that's uh, close by. So Dun and Bradstreet Credibility. How many people know about Dun and Bradstreet Credibility? So they are actually located in Malibu. So um, th there's a bunch of guys who are uh, internet entrepreneurs who bought. Uh, the Dun and Bradstreet credibility portion from Dun and Bradstreet a few years ago, uh, they uh, they didn't pay 350 million dollars. What they did is they took the credit rating business. So if you've ever run a small business, there's a there's a rating you get. If you want to borrow money from somebody, they look up your Dun's number and they say, hey, are these guys paying their bills and how much do they make? And and they took that business and they built it up. Then they sold it back to Dun and Bradstreet <laughs> for for probably around double what they paid for it. Uh, those guys are in Malibu, so uh, uh, you know that's fairly local. Uh, this one's interesting. So if you remember, I talked about Networks, which is uh, Patrick Sunjong, the billionaire in L.A. One of the companies that he bought uh, was I don't even remember the name of what it was before, but uh, he renamed it Nant Quest. <laughs> he put the Nant in front of that that company and took it IPO. It was the biggest biotech IPO in history. That's out of LA. No one actually noticed that it was out of LA either. Um, so it took $2.6 billion market cap at, at their IPO. Uh, market share is a marketing company there in LA. Maintenance Net, Maintenance Net is in um, San Diego. ParkMe is in LA. Kickster is a company in LA. Uh, I would argue uh, Match Group is interesting. Um, how many people how many, well, no, I'm not going to ask that question. How many people know what Tinder is, right? Yeah, so Match Group actually owns Tinder. So Tinder, the big story was Tinder's a great, great dating app. Um, and uh, it's actually, and everyone says, hey, it's a great startup, but it's actually owned by Match Group the whole time. And so they took that IPO along with a lot of other stuff. So uh, that's interesting. Um, so anyway, that's some of the IPOs. And ex uh, Calabasas. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yes, they were. Now, I, that one is slightly different because they were public already. The rest of these guys were private. Um, but uh, it's a big deal. So uh, the only downside of this is, so, so there's a problem when you get purchased. And that is sometimes the buyers decide that, oh, we're going to trim a little. We've got this already. And they kind of uh, went through and whacked a lot of people out of Kythera, So. Good, good for the investors, bad for the employees. So I'm going to talk a little bit about things to watch for um, in 2016. Um, and, and we'll talk about it. So sometimes it's, it's interesting to me to listen to what people think is going to happen and what, we, what I see, at least from my perspective, covering the news and seeing what the deals are like. Um, and the number one interesting thing, which, which I think people haven't paid attention to, um, some people have, is uh, watching for the unicorns and what happens. Um, so this is starting to come out now, but if you're an investor, uh, it's very interesting to be investing in a unicorn. Um, because as you can see from all those IPOs, IPOs typically don't value, our IPOs at least, you know, if you're being valued at $448 million at your IPO, if you had $2, million, $2 billion invested, you know, that's not going to work so well. You've got to have a very big IPO for that to work. 
And so there's a lot of worry. If you talk to the investors both here in LA and elsewhere um, about what is happening, what's going to happen with the unicorns. Uh, the investors who I would say the smart investors uh, haven't been investing in these guys. You'll see that the investments, they may have invested in them originally. And, um, but, but you'll see that they've been shy about the latest rounds. And they're the big institutional investors. They're overseas uh, uh, sovereign funds that are investing in them. Um, everyone familiar with what a unicorn is? That, that is a company that in their venture round was valued at more than $1 billion. So that means the investors got together and said, how much is this company worth uh, at their round? It's all private, and they all discuss this. And Joel over there can probably tell you the magic that goes into valuations. <laughs> but uh, um, the, uh, uh, it, it, there's a lot of, oh, what's it worth? And the number that has been the, the kind of benchmark for are you a hot company or not has been a billion dollars. So those are called the unicorns. Um, Southern California has very few of them. I think the last count I looked at, we probably have five. Um, S SpaceX is one of them. Snapchat's the other one. Um, I don't remember who else the other guys were. Um, but not very many. Uh, Silicon Valley, on the other hand, has a lot of them. And so there's a lot of worry right now because it, you know, how do investors make their money on a startup? They get it through an exit. And your two choices as an exit are mergers and acquisitions or an IPO. And most M&A deals are less than a billion dollars. Lynda.com was one of the few that was, that as, a, as a private company, that was more than a billion dollars. Um, and so that was pretty good. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, and in IPOs, there's very few that are above a billion dollars. So there's a lot of like, oh, how does this work? And, and uh, some of the guys who came out recently didn't do as well. Don't get me wrong. There's companies here that are doing phenomenal in terms of changing the way we do things. So how many people here use Uber? Uber is a, it, obviously it's changed how people do a lot of things. It's a great, innovative company. The question is, is it worth, you know, I don't know what their last valuation is. But it's pretty, uh, pretty astronomical. Um, so, so that's one area to think about is, you know, how, how, how is this going to end up doing? The lucky thing for us in Southern California, uh, one of several lucky things, is we don't have a lot of unicorns. Um, our investors have not gone crazy, for better or for worse, on, on investments. Um, most of the guys uh, and gals um, here who are investors have been very shy about investing in companies at very, very high evaluations, um, which is good. And, and that's probably because most of the folks who are investing today have been through a couple of ups and downs, quite a few from uh, you know, the 2000, 2008, and so on. So, um, and then the other thing is valuations don't matter in companies that are doing well and making revenues, because they're not dependent on going IPO right away, right? So. So, number two, rural instability, that's another thing to watch out for. Uh, the investors I've talked to, and I talk to them you know, every week, do interviews and whatnot, um, it's definitely a concern. So even though, uh, even though um, you know, we're, I think, think it's more isolated in Silicon Valley. You know, there, there's, there's a little bubble there for sure in terms of what's going on in the world and all that. Um, but as all of you know, there's a lot of, lot of issues out there in the world right now. Uh, ranging from issues with Russia to terrorism, whatever, uh, Syria. All those things have an impact. Now, they're giant things. It's very hard to call, but it's definitely something that I know that investors are nervous. And when nervous investors are nervous, you've got to wonder. So it's definitely something to think about. Um, however, on the upside, there's a lot of disruption happening. And by disruption, I mean that people are thinking of new ways to do business, uh, to do things more efficiently, and I have been surprised, even though a lot of them are, are going on the, uh, the marketplace Uber thing, uh, there's a lot of other areas where uh, there's a lot of disruption happening, and, and there's new, new things that you would never think of uh, every, every year. I'm, that's, that's why I do this, is it's been a passion for me to see what's, you know, what is someone going to come up with next? Um, so. Mobile is definitely still a big thing. Smartphones, how are people doing that? Uh, On-demand things, even though there's a lot of those startups. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, uh, that it's great 
great to be able to do that you couldn't do before everyone had a smartphone. So, um, and there's always something new, and it's always surprising. Uh, the other thing about it is there's a trickle down for sure between the big consumer, all the consumer stuff, and business to B two B stuff, business stuff. Um, uh, there's a lot of enterprise things that they haven't even felt a lot of this. So, uh, how many people use a cloud service? I'm sure everyone does, right? Uh, how many people work for a company that still is struggling to use a cloud service? A lot of companies. So there's a giant swath of enterprise customers who are still very nervous about adopting the cloud for things. And there's, there's a lot of different areas there that, that have a potential as well. Um, so one, I just wanted to, and I don't know what the answer here is, um, but the question is, is it going to be a, a, a fundraising year for the VCs, or is it going to be an investment year for the VCs? And um, uh, if uh, you're not familiar with how VC funds work, is they actually go to something called limited partners uh, for their money. So VCs are just like companies. They've got to raise money as well. And they get commitments from institutional uh, investors. And that can be pension funds. It can be family offices. It can be uh, you know, uh, very wealthy individuals. Um, and there's a cycle to that. And um, the question, locally at least, is how many of those folks are fundraising versus investing? And a couple of the funds have raised funds, but there's always a problem in Southern California where our investors get uh, stuck trying to raise money um, all at the same time. And then what happens is the local investors aren't very active. Uh, it, I think it might be counteracted by a lot of Silicon Valley activity right now. Um, but um, it's always interesting to see how that influences the, the investment pattern. Um, so the other big question that's going on right now is, is the IPO market going to be open or is it going to be closed? Um, as we, I, I, I talked about with the, uh, with the unicorns, is there's been a lot of testing of the IPO market. So, uh, not so much here in Southern California. Uh, I think we have a few companies out there looking at it. Um, but I, I would say for the last three months, it's been a, a maybe it's open, maybe it's closed, maybe it's open, maybe it's closed. And, 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 and IPO markets are something where, you know, if it's a bad week for news, sometimes companies won't, won't be able to raise money or, or if people are nervous about the economy. Um, on the other hand, if all of a sudden, for some reason, some other company goes IPO and does well. Then, so, so it's tough. There's a lot of companies kind of waiting in the wings. I think the st national stats I saw from the other day were how the, we had the lowest number of IPOs this year uh, nationally than we have in, in quite a few years. Um, you know, strangely enough, in the, the slide here, we had our biggest year for IPOs. <laughs> so, you know, what, what happens locally is not necessarily what happens everywhere, um, but it's definitely a, a, a question. So um, anyway, that's an overview. And I thought I would take questions, talk about deals. Um, what, what do people want to know? Question? How do you get your news? How do I get my news? So people ask me that all the time. Uh, actually, people have asked me, oh, so you know, what, what national news service do you get all your information from? And, uh, and if you look at what we cover, um, Nobody covers the same news that we do. And it's all a million ways. So um, I, like I said, I've been doing this for a 1,000 internet years. And so I know a lot of people in the industry, uh, talk to a lot of people, uh, you know, have a lot of contacts, know the companies, know people working with the companies. It's a million different ways. Yeah. Anyone else? Question? In terms of what demographics? Well, for example, Davis Lionel used to be movers and changers, and Davis Lionel is millennials. Would this affect how they're going to invest, what they're looking for? Um, so it, it de definitely, de demographics does affect the investment. Um, uh, definitely the biggest markets are the ones that people are looking for. Interestingly enough, you know, there's a lot of investments around oh, what are mi millennials going to want. What are they going to buy? Um, it's interesting because I don't think people know the answer on, on that necessarily. Um, I would say some of that generation still not in their earning years, right? If you're 
you know, I'm sure there's a lot of students in the room. You're not spending a lot of money because you don't have a lot of money. You're not working, right? So, <laughs> um, uh, but, but uh, for example, uh, there's a lot of startups uh, in senior health, in healthcare, right? Because of the change in demographics. You've got a lot of boomers who are aging and you know, a lot of people with home health and, and, and a lot of that kind of stuff. So, yes, it does it affect things. But it, it's, um, I, I would say, follow the markets. You know, where, where are people spending money? That's where the f funding goes. Yeah, so, so I haven't seen much personally, and especially not in Southern California. Um, I, I know a lot of people are looking at this, um, and, and there may be someone here who follows us closer, but my understanding is the rules are still a little fuzzy in terms of how the SEC wants to handle it. So a lot of people are still, you know, holding back. Um, it's, it is an interesting idea um, to be able to crowdfund from anybody, um, but, but it's... Uh, it's one thing I've learned over the years looking at companies is funding, uh, and actually Mike can probably talk about this with the TCA. Just think how hard it is to manage, you know, 20 angels in an investment, and think about how hard it is to manage a thousand little guys in an investment. It's, it, yeah, it's it's. I I think it's going to be interesting, but maybe someone else has a, uh, hey Joel. Well, you know what? It's funny enough, at least here in Southern California, I think there's very little impact of oil prices and, and even the world economy right now on, on individual startups. It, you know, as much as it affects the venture capitalists and how eager they are to invest, maybe, but most of the startups, you know, that's the funny thing about today, right? Is, and that's why like, the federal government has an impossible time you know, affecting the economy is to say, hey, we cut interest rates and, and startups go, Ooh, so what? <laughs> We're not buying any equipment, right? So there, there's, a, there's a disconnect, I think, between that. So. Yeah, so, so uh, I always find it fascinating um, that Southern California has such a diverse industry base that you never know what's going to be hot. Um, uh, as I mentioned a few years ago, clean tech was the big one. Um, software's always pretty high, internet. For, uh, the funny thing is, if you'd asked me to show these same slides two years ago, I would say, hey, internet advertising is the hottest sector. Um, do you know how many internet advertising fun, uh, companies got funded this year? Very, very few. A handful. The, the venture capitalists won't touch them with, uh, with a long pole. And, and that's, uh, it's interesting because, you know, you say, hey, that's the big industry. So um, if you look at uh, the list of companies that got funding, it is all over the map. Yeah, yeah. Um, th there's definitely a lot of internet-like companies. So let's see here. Honest Company is an e-commerce company. They got $100 million. Um, let's see here. Dollar Shave Club. Anyone seen Dollar Shave Club? Yeah, they have uh, great, funny commercials. Um, Flipagram, they're a big mobile app. But uh, one, of the fun, uh, one of the fundings that kind of follows here is Unique. Anyone seen Unique? They do drones. They're a Chinese company, but their headquarters is in LA. I don't know how that works, but you know how the... Someone decided to put marketing here, and they put their production there. Um, there's a lot of medical companies. Um, 
uh, Tiger Text, texting for medical, for healthcare. Uh, this company is actually pretty funny. Uh, how many people have heard of Tiger Text? So Tiger Text, uh, if you are a healthcare worker, and you say you're a nurse or you're a doctor or something, and you want to text somebody saying, hey, so-and-so patient needs X and Y, you know you, you can't do that theoretically because of the law. Uh, it's, it's HIPAA, right? So Tiger Text makes an app that basically does all the texting for them. Um, and they've done very well. Uh, funny enough, uh, one of their main investors is uh, Travis Kalanick of Uber, who's the roommate of the guy who started that. That's in LA. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of companies. It's, it's all over the map. So. Uh, yeah, because there wasn't many fundings this year in big data. Um, the list, uh, uh, there's a lot of big data companies. Um, there's a lot last year, but for some reason in Southern California, uh, there weren't a lot of big data, data companies that were funded last year. Uh, Yeah, yeah, some, some of that is hype. Um, there's a lot of uh, cloud companies, uh, not in 2014, but 2013, that were acquired out of LA. In fact, that was probably the biggest, um, uh, the biggest news in LA was, I, and I, I see so many companies during the day, it's like I gotta remember, there, there's four or five giant cloud acquisitions by Cisco and Red Hat and whatever out of Southern California, it's like Santa Barbara, Pasadena, there was a lot of those companies. That was you know, last year, not this year. So it's, it's interesting that, you know, it changes. But that's true, that's true. Yeah, 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 I agree. It, you know what? It changes. It, it's amazing. Um, and, and Joel's a recovering VC back there. <laughs> and he can tell you how, fa how fashion-driven a lot of investments are. You know, one year is this, the next year is that. Everyone decides they don't like the end industry because of something, but then they go back to it again. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to predict. Um, yeah, hardware's definitely, uh, well, like I said, though, all the electronic stuff, some of that's coming back because of the Kickstarter stuff. That's, um, I would say if you're a chip company, you still have a hard time. Um, once upon a time, anyone who's been here in the industry, uh, you know, the 101 corridor was, the, Westlake Village was the place for semiconductor companies. Um, I think there was, uh, there, there must have been 15 or 20 companies here who had funding, I mean big funding, 50 million, 100 million dollars, all in this area. And then what happened is people said they don't want to invest that much money in in something that takes so long to get to market. Uh, that's the other problem with biotech companies. Biotech companies have the same problem, which is it's such a long time frame. So if you're looking at, hey, do I invest in a Snapchat, and maybe you get an exit in five years or six years, or, you know, internet is a giant thing, or do I invest $150 million in the next chip, which maybe or maybe won't get bought out, you know, people have tended to go for the, the quick, quick buck. Okay. Yes, actually, so, so incubators. So this is, this is an interesting one, again, where it was a fashion. So um, four years ago, uh, I would say four years ago was the incubator year for Southern California. Uh, I think I, I have on my site um, 12, 13, 14, maybe, 15, I don't know. There's a lot of incubators, and they all started three or four years ago. And I can tell you now, there are too many, because <laughs> most of them, have hung up their hats or they've changed what they do. So um, a lot of them have turned into VC funds. So they, they don't do the, hey, everyone throw their business plan at me, we'll pick 10 guys, run for three months. Uh, the exception is um, the ones that are corporate. So uh, two of them are the Dodgers Accelerator. Uh, how many know about the Dodgers Accelerator? So, oh, well, interesting. So, so the Dodgers, the LA Dodgers, right, sports team, um, they actually started up an incubator and they did their first class. They just finished their first class. Three month or four month program. They got all companies who were uh, involved with some aspect of sports. You might be interested in that. Um, and they, uh, they put their, their, uh, all their executives to help those companies. Um, uh, the, the funny thing is people go, hey, what has baseball got to do with, with 
financial investment and incubation. Uh, funny enough, the owners of the LA Dodgers are all finance guys and VCs. So it's, it's like, you know, the Do Dodgers are a property they own, and they said, hey, we'll throw our investment. So that's interesting. The other one is uh, the Disney Accelerator. How many people know what the Disney Accelerator is? Again, uh, Disney uh, decided, hey, we're going to do an accelerator program. Same kind of thing. We're going to get a whole bunch of companies. They'll apply to be part of our program. And we'll help them out. We'll get our executives involved, see how we can move these companies forward. Um, and they've actually done very well. Um, uh, I know for sure that all of you have seen the, uh, the, uh, the BB-8 Star Wars robot, the ro robotic ball, orange and white, right? Who hasn't seen that? <laughs> so, so that actually is, uh, that is one of the huge successes out of the Disney Accelerator. Uh, a company out of Boulder called Sphero, they make these robotic balls. Uh, they did that program, I think, last year, and they said, hey, can you build a robotic ball that we can use as part of the movie and the merchandising? And that is now everywhere. I think that's the biggest, th that company was already up and running, um, but they are, I, I think Disney has blown out the number of robots they've sold. I think, um, I think the first batch of the robots they did for Star Wars, they sold more of those than they'd sold in total in their whole lifetime. And that was just the first batch. And so that, that, that they did pretty well. And they just did another class, and they've got a lot of good companies there. So. Um, follow-up question on the incubators. So of the incubators in LA, who are making the VCs? Right. Um, which ones are the most successful? Uh, I would say, for my numbers, Mucker Lab has been one of the most successful. Uh, they, uh, they have a, they've got a guy who, who ran it who was a VC, and in, in Silicon Valley, a lot of good companies out of that. Uh, Amplify guys, they have a few good ones. Um, uh, there, there's. Uh, it's interesting. It's hard as a as a startup incubator to go from nothing to something. So if you've got just an idea and you go to an incubator, it's very hard to get to a company. But if you are a uh, if you've got something and you want to build it, then an incubator can help a lot. So. If you want, email me later, and, and uh, I think we're good. Uh, yeah, one more. One more. <laughs> so, so um, yeah. So anyone who didn't know, um, so Docstock used to be one of the biggest companies out of the LA area. Um, Jason Nazar, who was everywhere, uh, ran that, and he sold it to uh, Doc, uh, into it in 2013. I think for around $50 million. And so Intuit took it, ah, oh, great new startup. And then they decided to shut it down earlier this month on the 1st. Just it's like, boop, I guess we didn't need that business. So um, yes. <laughs> so so, so uh, the one problem that the region and everywhere, uh, everywhere across Southern California we have is we have a lot of startups that they are successful, then they sell out to somebody. And then that person either guts that company or moves it, and we don't have any giant companies left after that. And that happened. That's happened a lot. Anyone remember GeoCities? Used to have like thousand employees in Santa Monica. They got bought, and they went. Psh, you know, uh, look at Overture, right? Bought by Yahoo. Yeah. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that happens sometimes. So. Well, let's, good. Uh, let's thank Ben.